Bessie has a mysterious array of n integers. She won't tell you what they are, but she will tell you a different array of the difference between the maximum and the minimum of any given range inside of her array. We want to find an array that could be Bessie's original. Note that the values need to range between negative 10 to the power of 9 and 10 to the power of 9. Let's look at one of the example test cases provided. The first observation we can make is that we can actually neglect the first column because it's always going to be 0 since it's the difference between the min and max of the same number. The second observation we can make is that the second column is the difference between i and i plus 1 where i is the row of the difference. So what that means is the 1 highlighted is the difference between the first and second element, the 0 is the difference between the second and third, and the 2 is the difference between the third and fourth. And we know this because in a range with only two numbers, one of them has to be the minimum and one of them has to be the maximum, so the difference between the min and max is just going to be the absolute difference between the two numbers. But why is this important? What we can do with this question is we can assume x, where x is the last number. And with our given differences, we can now figure out that if the fourth element in this given example is x, because we know that the difference between the third and fourth element is 2, the third element must be either x minus 2 or x plus 2. It can't be anything else because it would violate the rule that the difference between the third and fourth element is 2. Now, with this in mind, we can take it one step further and say the second element has to be one of the four options of x minus 2 minus 0, x minus 2 plus 0, so on, because we know the difference between element 2 and 3 is 0, then depending on what element 3 is, there are only two choices based on that. So if element 3 is x minus 2, then element 2 must be x minus 2 minus 0 or plus 0. If element 3 is x plus 2, it must be x plus 2 minus 0 or plus 0. Now we can take it one step even further and say that for the first element, it's going to be on the list of x minus 2 minus 0 plus 1 minus 1 x minus 2 plus 0 plus 1, minus 1, and so on and so forth. Where basically, every time we figure out a new element, the element before that, with just these ranges, is just going to be either that element plus the difference or minus the difference. But this has a lot of options, so let's take a step back. If we assume an x where x is the value of the fourth element, then with our observation made about the second column, the value at the element with the index 3 must equal either x minus 2 or x plus 2. It cannot equal anything else because again, that violates the rules. So if we can prove that the value is not x plus 2, it must be x minus 2. It has to be one or the other. So if we can prove that one is not true, then it must automatically become the other. And because of this, it makes our question a lot easier. But how do we know that the value is definitely 100% not x plus 2? Well, we can use the other ranges. Let's go back to our example. If we think that x is 4, then we can first set 3 as x plus 2. And as we can see, there are no other ranges to prove or disprove this, so it should be correct. Now, if we move on to element 2, let's continue to claim that element 2 is x plus 2 plus 0. Well, as we showed earlier, the first column is useless. The second column we already used to prove now we can use the third column and check to see if the difference is still correct. In this case, the difference between the elements 2 and 4 is 2. And if we go on our ranges, the max is x plus 2, 
the min is x. And when we subtract x plus 2 minus x, we get 2. So this difference is correct, and x plus 2 plus 0 is a valid number for 2. Now when we find the first element, we can try and claim that the value is x plus 2 plus 1. So if we go and check this, the first range, or actually the third column, shows that the difference from 1 to 3 is 1. And if we look at it, the max is x plus 3, the min is x plus 2, so the difference is in fact 1. But when we go to the next range, the difference from 1 to 4, according to our test case, should be 2. But when we actually look at it, the max is x plus 3, and the min is x. So the difference is actually 3. And so x plus 2 plus 1 definitely cannot work. And since we've proved that x plus 2 plus 1 cannot work, the only other option for the first element must be x plus 2 minus 1. And if we go back and test our ranges, which technically we don't need to do, we can see that the two ranges, the difference from 1 to 3 and the difference from 1 to 4, both work now. So our final range has, according to x, become x minus 1, x plus 2, x plus 2, and x, which should be correct according to the example test case. Before we code it, the last kind of observation we need to make is we can set x to literally any value. Since all of the differences are relative, we can just set x to an arbitrary value. And because the question gives us a range from negatives to positive for possible values, we're just going to set x to 0. But it should work with any value around that range. So let's go code this. I've started off the code with the input. After that, we're going to loop through all of the values from n minus 2 to 0. The reason we don't start with n minus 1 is because we're giving it a set value, 0. For all of the other values from n minus 2 to 0, we're going to set it initially to the value after it plus the difference. Then we're going to loop through all of the values from i to n minus 1. For each one of these values, we're going to keep track of, well actually we're going to keep track of a running min and max. And then for each one of these values, we're going to calculate the difference. If this difference doesn't align with the difference array, then we're going to set our flag as false. At the end of our loop, if our flag is false, that means that this does not work as the value for i. So if i plus the difference doesn't work, then i minus the difference must work. So we're going to set it equal to the value after that minus the difference. At the end, we're going to print out our array. And that's the end of our program.